Welcome to the Insurance Producers Podcast, where we bring you the top personalized producers, insurance agents, and industry partners, giving you at least three takeaways to 10x your production and build your multi-million dollar revenue books. So sit back, relax, and become inspired by the success stories and strategies of the world's top insurance minds. Let's roll. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Insurance Producers Podcast. My name is Cyrus Jaffrey, your host, and I've got a special person today, Kimmy Donahue. How are you? Hey, doing great. Thank you. All right. It's uh, it's good to have you, Kimmy. I uh. I have never personally met you, and but but this is our first time in a video. But I followed you on LinkedIn. I followed your path the last so many years. So if you don't mind, really quick, if you can maybe just tell us a little bit about your background, maybe take a minute or so, and then where you are at today, that would be awesome. Sure. Yeah. I mean, how how far back do we want to go? <laughs> you how far as far back as you want. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I love talking about it just because the you know, like everybody, I literally fell into the industry. Right. I, no, none of us woke up in the morning and was like, "Hey, I'm gonna do insurance." Right. I was actually, gosh, I was 20 years old, six months pregnant, working at a car wash. You know, the the girl that asks, "Would you like tire shine with that?" <laughs> And actually started working for my parents' insurance agent as a CSR. Got it. So got, you know, got started as customer service rep, eventually transitioned into sales. And then I actually opened up a captive agency for about four years with American Family. So really learned how to start up, operate, hire, et cetera. And I, forgive me, I'm not sure why my... Computer keeps beeping at us. I'm going to figure no that worries, out. No Found no, it. Right. Gone now. Perfect. perfect. <laughs> All right, back it up. So, yeah, was a captive agent for about four years with American Family, and then noticed that there was a lot happening on the independent side. Right. I also did a short stint as a corporate leadership with another captive company, and in 2019 started a scratch agency, independent. And went directly, you know, just dove in head first. And I knew going into it, since I had a agency, you know, with American Family, that I was going to have to run lean. So I cashed out my 401k. I sold my car. Basically, I, I downsized everything because I knew I would have to run lean. And that's really what let me survive for the next maybe 12 months or so. And grew it to a very successful agency, had a team of about 10 people. And had a successful exit in 2022. Very cool. And then so, so some of you may know me from then? as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I was actually a career rep for Openly for a few years. Absolutely love them. And for any of you watching right now, I'm repping my Openly mug here. It's not wine. It is water. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and most recently, about six months ago, jumped over to Premier Strategy Box with Mick Hunt as his sales director for both PSB and Patty as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. So let's go back. So you've done it all. CSR, Captive, Indie, Scratch, Carrier, and then obviously, <laughs> um, I guess, which one has been your favorite? I've always wanted to ask that. Oh, different different parts of it, right? You know, we all have our favorite parts. You know, being an independent agent was my absolute favorite. You know, you you get to design it the way you want. I love helping people. I love giving people opportunities. And there's just something about making your own check that's just really exciting. You know, a, a little bit of stress makes us work harder, right? Perfect. So I'm trying to figure out that 2022 2022 exit was obviously was obviously planned got into the got into the carrier side with with openly obviously what made you go on to the cuz i know i know i know Mick one of the one of the greatest dudes that i know on, in the industry what got you excited about premier strategy box yeah so after selling my agency you know anyone that's exited from any business you you take a couple minutes to go what do i do next you know, and I, I thought about consulting and 
openly happen to have a position in Arizona and I love openly, obviously I, I had purple hair before I went to work for them. Right. <laughs> so, so I went over there and helped them grow Arizona and there was a position over at Premier Strategy Box that just fit all my values. You know, I wanted to help out agencies grow their book of business, help them learn how to build a team, how to communicate better. And it just, it aligned with everything that I wanted. So jumped ship about six months ago. That's awesome. So when uh, this is obviously producers um, podcast. So I kind of want to dig a little bit deeper and what made you successful at, at AmFam first, there's a lot of captive agents that listen to this podcast as well. So uh, obviously you had a pretty big team pretty quick. Uh, how did you kind of get the ball rolling on the captive side? What are some things? I know you said you were being lean, but what did you do, I guess, as far as the producers? Because I'm assuming you were drumming up some business, right? Like where did you have success in those first or second year? Networking, a thousand percent. And I was super blessed that the mentors and the places that I worked right leading up to that actually showed me how to network, you know, whether it was BNI, whether it was just any of the local networking groups. And I ended up starting my own. In fact, you know, you, you start attending the ones that, you know, mm -hmm. fit your, fit your vibe, you know? Mm -hmm. And I also was connected with several big real estate teams and mortgage lenders. And I learned from them how they set up their schedule, you know, obviously model success, right? No need to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. So I saw what they were doing and most of them had what they called a milk route where every day they had certain people that they called or certain mm -hmm. people that they go and visit. And I just, I modeled that and it, it blew up. It was all about just talking to people, you know, and mm -hmm. you, you hear that it feels cliche, but it's really what it came down to. And you know, when I first started in the industry, I was not good at sales. Like I had a nervous giggle. I, you know, uh, did not know <laughs> what I was doing, you know, the first few years and you learn as you go. And mm -hmm. the beautiful thing about numbers is the more people you talk to, eventually you're going to get to sell somebody, the more experience you acquire. And that's what makes you better. Yeah. I, I just, uh, this episode that just came out actually today was, um, was with uh, Brett Young in uh, Florida. I'm not sure if you know Urban Young Agency, how their their the system you know, with um, with uh, real estate and mortgage lenders that they've had success with in their team. And we had a deep conversation conversation there. As far as networking goes, Kimmy, do you think in today's environment with what's happening in the industry right now, should agents be doing the same things that they're doing even in this hard market? That's a great question. I think setting clear expectations with your referral partners is what's going to make you successful, regardless of you know where the market is right now or even before. It's it is let's say you're let's say you're working with a mortgage lender, and you want to set up the expectations of how quickly you can get a quote back and be able to you know actually deliver on that, and also educating your referral partners about what's going on in the market. You know, mm -hmm. underwriting is tighter. Rates are not the same. Sometimes it does take a little bit longer, sometimes a lot longer to get quotes back. So I think just setting those expectations up front, pre-framing, hey, here's how the relationship's going to work. Here's what I can offer you and educating them just about what has changed. Yeah, I like that. So when you were when you were starting up, was there a number? I know you said just talk to people. Like for us, for example, in our office, I think we have 13 producers somewhere in there. And each person is responsible. We call it CTEs, which is called text emails. You're responsible for talking to 25 people a day. Like that's just, that's our non-negotiable. Like that's, if you're going to be in our office, that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And did you have a number like that or for part for referral partners? Uh, and if you do, do you want to share? And also dig a little bit deeper. We do time blocks. So like nine to 10, that's the time block. Go in your room, make your calls. And then three to four, that's a time block. Did you do something like that by chance? A thousand percent. And when I was captive, you know, we're, we're focused on apps rather mm -hmm. than premium, mm -hmm. right? And then when you get into the independent world, you're much more focused on premium, mm -hmm. not the apps whatsoever. So in captive world, my goal when I first started out was 50 apps a month. P and C. And of course, you know, I had some, some life insurance goals on me as well at the time. 
um, can't remember, but I think we aimed for at least two life policies a month. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you grow and you start learning based on their experience, you can also set goals with your producers, uh, you know, based on, on income. And in the indie world, it was much more based on premium. You know, my personal goal was 70,000 in premium when I first started. And then that goes up and up and up as you get more experience and you start writing larger policies, you know, when, especially when you start getting into commercial, that 70 K could, could be one policy, mm -hmm. you know, at that point. So it, we always did the work backwards, you know, start with an income goal. And if you're, if you're a producer, you can do that. If you're an agency principal, you're looking at how much does it cost to have a producer? You know, mm -hmm. where's our break even point? Where does it, you know, and you, you start working backwards at that point. So for yeah. producers, you figure out how much money do you want to make? And, you know, back in the day, it was funny because I would interview people and they'd always say a hundred grand. Mm -hmm. And I think that was just a number, you know, that we all pulled out of the air. And, mm -hmm. you know, that number is, is much different, you know, in 2024 than it was in 09. So it, I would just, uh, I would offer, I offer this to producers is really think about what would make you feel good, you know, monetarily and what freedom you can get from that. And then work with your agent, agency owner, or work with your team lead and work backwards to figure out how many policies, how, many, how much premium do you need to sell? And then look at your closing ratio. If you use a CRM in your office, most of those are pretty robust these days. You can figure out how many conversations it took to close that. Mm -hmm. And you can work backwards. And now you know your, your daily, weekly, monthly number. Yeah, I love that. I was a State Farm agent. So we were all apps for six yep. years. I left in 2019. It was all about apps. And it's funny because uh, to make President's Club is like, top 50 agencies in the country agents make president's club for like fire, which is car, which is obviously home insurance. And we would, I would hound my team to write personal articles policies, which was like basically ring personal ring policies for them, I guess. And it is on this end as well. It's like $4, you know, but my guys would spend hours writing a $4 policy to, for me to make president's club, which we did a couple of times. And, I get it. Golf and, cart policies too. <laughs> exactly. And umbrellas, golf carts. Um, I mean, it's unbelievable. Looking, looking back on the indie channel, I'm like, do not touch that account. There's no way you're spending that kind of, that kind of time, you know, mm -hmm. writing a policy that's three, $4 a month. So completely different ball game. Yeah. Very different world for sure. So on the scratch side, or I guess on the indie channel, what are some things that some of your producers that were having, because I know you had some producers that obviously had some success. Mm -hmm. Did you make them follow the same model, like on a daily basis of like things they had to do to go find those referral partners like you were doing? Did you get them into networking stuff or were you the one that was going and drumming the business, bringing it into the agency? So both. We had some producers that you know I would make it rain for them and they would work the leads that come in and they were on a you know, in a specific department. And then we have, you know, the more independent contractor style that do go and drum up their own business. And it, and it did include having a very, uh, a very clear accountability chart of here's how many conversations to do a day. Here's our weekly check-in and following that exact same format. Yeah. Did you, on the accountability side of things, which is obviously the biggest thing as a leader, uh, to keep them accountable. Was there, was there a number? Cause I know you go backwards, which is funny because at the end of the year, I, I have a meeting with all of our people. I think we got 25 W2 employees. And I just asked them, I said, what do you want to make next year? Kind of what you said. They said, Oh, mm -hmm. I want to make this. And then we have their numbers. So we know exactly how many calls, how many texts, how many quotes, and we know their closing percentage. We know the kind of leads that they're getting, referral partners. And then you kind of back your way into it. Okay. If you want to make 200,000 where before it was a hundred, here is what you need to do on a daily basis. So you are responsible for three quotes. Well, you need to make 10 calls to get three quotes. Like, so the number doesn't lie, right? Exactly. So I love that your team, you were doing that with your team because at the end of the day, then if they don't hit their revenue goal, it's honestly because they didn't do the activity. 
Exactly. And our CRM that we used actually tracked number of calls, number of text messages, emails. So it was, and it was posted on a public scoreboard. So everybody on the team knows exactly where everybody stood. So if you're someone with a goose egg, you know, a, a zero on all across your scoreboard, everybody sees it, including you. And I would assume that CRM is probably a captive agent CRM because that doesn't exist in the independent channel. Well, fun fact, that. it's actually a real estate CRM. I was introduced to it uh-huh. by the real estate team that I was partnered up with. And you're you're right. It, it didn't exist in the insurance world. And when somebody figures that out, and I hope they're listening, that, that will be a game changer for all insurance agents, indie and captive. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I hope somebody does. There's so many different technology com- po- technology companies that have come out of nowhere in the last three mm-hmm. years. And you're right. The person that figures out how to, cause that's one thing about state farm. Like we went into one place, mm-hmm. you know, when I came on the indie channel five years ago, I was like, what? I have to go to 20 different carrier websites. Then I got to go to my CRM. <laughs> then I got to go to my management system. Then I have yeah. a scoreboard buzz where I keep my team accountable that's not even including like the QuickBooks and all this stuff we do as an agency principal and all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Now I've got like 35 different places that I got to keep track of usernames and passwords. And, and it's a nightmare. Uh, what was a game changer for me was two really big monitors. And I mean, they're, I think they're 32, 36 inch. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like I have four monitors. <laughs> <laughs> that's what got me through in the independent world. And yeah. When, when you were at State Farm, did you guys still use Neko? So Neko is still there. What? Yes. Neko I, that is, is crazy. Yeah, I think Neko is going to die when State Farm dies, which is never. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so for anyone listening that is not familiar with State Farm, Neko, Neko is a DOS system. Uh-huh. From like 1842. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's- still have it. My father-in-law is a State Farm agent. They still have Neko and some, some, he has some team members that have been with him for 20, 30 years. Mm-hmm. That's all they use to make changes on existing policies. Now they use a different poli- different place to go write new business, mm-hmm. but all their servicing and stuff is on Neko. And the fun, the cool thing about Neko guys is Neko doesn't break. Like there is no break in Neko. It's so old. No. It just doesn't go down ever. So it's, it's great. True. I think F1 brought you back to the menu. <laughs> yes. Oh man. I have a headache just talking about it. I hated it. I never got into <laughs> it because I never did service, but my team would tell me and I'd look at it. I'd be like, I have a headache just looking at this. It's wild. Good times. So, so I, I, I kind of want to go into a little bit of the uh, premier strategy um, box, I guess. So for agents that don't know, for people that are listening, for the producers that don't know, maybe you can give us just a little bit of a synopsis of what it does and how it helps the agents and the producers, if you could, please. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, In a nutshell, we're a full service consulting company. And what makes us different is we actually provide tactics and have them take action. So that way, the goals that we set actually happen. Hmm. And we have also PADI, Premier Agency Development Institute, in conjunction with that. So a lot of the, excuse me, the consulting clients that also sign up with us get PADI as well. And what that is, it's an online community that we do live trainings, hmm. you know, rather than any, any kind of pre recorded stuff. So they're live interactive trainings. And the majority of them, you also get takeaways too, whether it is a playbook or, you know, a, a script, things like that. It's really, it's really neat. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And for agencies that, I guess, let's take my agency, for example. So we come to you and say, Hey, here's kind of our revenue goal. Here's what we want to, what we're, do we tell you like, here are the things that are like broken in our agency that I need help in. And then you guys kind of yeah. come in and say, okay, here is what, I mean, kind of evaluate and then put a plan together and then obviously see the plan working as you kind of keep going forward. That is exactly it. We, we consult first. So we find out what your pain points are. We don't just come in and prescribe. So very similar to being an insurance producer, right? Mm-hmm. We don't, just show up to the client and say, here's your cookie cutter policy. We ask, we do an intake and we ask what's, what's, what's your pain point, where you want to be. And same thing in the consulting world, we do the same thing. So if it's a revenue goal, that is your primary focus, then we look at everything that's going to increase your revenue. That's awesome. Love it. So 
you've kind of been in the industry for a while. Obviously, Premier Strategy Box, you, you talk to a lot of producers, a lot of agency owners. I guess, tell me, like, what, what differentiates the great agents, the great producers from your average producers and producers that are just kind of just plateauing and don't really have a book? Because I feel like a lot of your bigger agencies and companies have a lot of these producers that kind of just sitting on their book of business. Mm -hmm. They're not really growing, building a book of business. Um, what does differentiate like the great agents, the producers that are kind of keep growing the book of business and keeping making more money versus the ones that are just kind of plateauing? The ones that keep setting goals like and setting new goals, you know, and being consistent around it. I think the it's it all comes down to goals, you know, regardless of what area of life it is. You know, we could we could be talking about insurance, but we could also be talking about physical health. You know, maybe you've plateaued at at the gym or something, you know, and if you haven't set a goal, you're just going to remain there. So I think it's super important to just always be reviewing your goals and what's next and celebrate at 90 percent. That was something that I learned very recently is it it actually gets you excited to be able to get to the end of it. Because how many of us achieve a goal and then move on to something else and you never really celebrated it? Mm. You know, wow. taking the time to actually celebrate, it's going to get you excited to keep making new goals. That's awesome. We we celebrate every Friday at three o'clock with some drinks Love at it. the office. So There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like people like me at least, and, and, and you might be this way as well. Like it's very hard for me to to celebrate just because like, I'm always trying to do better. So we hit a goal. I'm like, all right, what's the next goal? Like I'm always on the go. And I feel like a lot of agents are that way, you know, the, especially your higher producing agents, they don't really, you know, but it's so important. We talk to our team all the time about this guys, like we got to celebrate the small wins because that's what kind of gets them to keep coming back and keep being happy about hitting certain goals. And I've done a bad job of it and I need to do better at it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, the beautiful thing about celebrating too, is then you, you decrease the risk of burnout and any high achiever listening, you're, if you're not focused on the wins, you're focused on, oh my gosh, here's what I'm not doing. Mm -hmm. Here's what needs to improve. And you're, con you're constantly focused on the, the gap. There's actually a book called the gap in the gain mm -hmm. that is specifically about high achievers that focus on the gain rather than the gap. Yeah. We read one book a month as a team. We've been doing that for four years and gap in the game. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll probably read for September. So <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Recommended yeah. to me by a good friend in the real estate. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to ask you about goals. I know you said set goals. What would you recommend for a producer that maybe is in the industry for a couple of years the goals change for everybody, obviously, but like, what do you recommend for producers that maybe don't know how to set goals? What would be an easier way for them to do that? Yeah. And if, if we're talking about a monetary amount, obviously that's going to be different for everybody, mm -hmm. you know, and, and some, there's a specific monetary amount that is going to equal options. Maybe there's a vacation that you've really wanted to go on, or maybe there's a home that you really want to buy, mm -hmm. you know? So I think, money, it's going to be different for everybody. But I think it just goes back to doing the simple things, you know, going back to setting a smart goal, right? Making it super specific. When I get, when am I going to actually achieve this? And then I think the piece that a lot of people forget is literally speaking it into existence as if it already happened, you know, talk about it in the present state, put it out into your future and then hold yourself accountable. Or if you struggle with that, find an accountability partner. Mm -hmm. That's That's been huge for me, especially in fitness, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. hire a trainer, hire a coach to mm -hmm. help you with that. That's essentially what we do at PSB is help with the accountability piece as well. And then just maintaining positive focus on it. I think that's as, as a team leader, anybody that's listening that, that leads a sales team is keeping them focused on it, you know, and it doesn't need to be a, a micromanaging meeting. It could be something real quick of, Hey, here's where we're at. Here's where we're headed. You know, let's do this together. Ra ra go mm. <laughs> in a I nutshell. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Um, so um, before I ask you a couple of last questions, I wanted to make sure 
Is there anything you'd like to share um, about Premier Strategy Box if they are interested in learning more? Where could they go to, to learn a little bit more about that? Yeah, mystrategybox.com and everything is on there. We have different programs specifically for consulting. And we can also do some a la carte options as well. And then Patty, there's two different ways to get in. If you're a solopreneur, it's a certain price. And forgive me, it's not in front of me. We, we actually just uh, started doing a bit of a discount for everybody. So if you go on there now, before we increase the prices, check it out. There's solopreneur. And then there's also the agency option. And that one would include the entire team. So the price that's listed on the website is for everybody in the agency. Cool. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, so I always, I, is it, I, there's one last question that we always end, end, end this podcast with that I'll ask you, but is there anything else that you would like to share to the producers, to the agency owners and the carriers listening to this? Yeah, I think if, if you're feeling stuck and you need some motivation, reach out. You know, even if it's not me, I'm happy to be that person, but find somebody that's going to be your accountability partner, your, your motivation, your inspiration. Uh, you know, it, sometimes you do just need that little bit of a push and all of a sudden you get momentum from that. Mm -hmm. It can change your life. I said, why reinvent the wheel? Somebody's already done it. Some people have already made those mistakes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people do a really bad job. Of it. They just think they're bothering other people. But, um, you know, I've had so many people that I've reached out to. I, I don't, I'm not afraid of just reaching out to people, you know, I'm just like, Hey, I'm, I'm stuck here. What can I do? What, what can you do to help me? And everybody has been so good at helping, but you're right. A lot of people don't reach out, unfortunately. Right. And, you spend thousands of dollars and figuring things out that has already been figured out, you know, if you just yeah. talk to people. So that's, that's a great advice. And I think you just did a great reminder. Uh, almost everybody I've ever reached to reach out to for help as well is so willing to help. So there's definitely people out there with, you know, no, no motives behind that, that would love to help. Absolutely. So we always end this podcast with, a question that is regarding your day. So I'm a big believer in win the day. That's kind of my motto. Um, I, I usually, everybody has bad days. It is okay. Um, I feel like if you have two bad days, you know, it's a little concerning. If you have three bad days, you know, that becomes habit and then it turns into kind of a funk. And, and I've truly believed that if you don't have three bad days in a row, you're going to have a successful life. So my question for you is what, is one thing on the personal side or the professional side that you can maybe share with the audience that you use on a daily basis? This is something that you do when you put your pillow, with you, your head on the pillow at night, you're like, Hey, that was a good day. Like I won that day because I did this one thing. Yeah. I think I've always carried this motto with me. I learned it at a very young age. Kindness is free hmm. and just re being a Remember to be kind to others, you know, even if you can just leave an impact on one person that day, you know, you did your job. And I think, you know, let's say you are having a bad day, just do a pattern interrupt, go outside, walk around. I'm from Tucson, so we've got a lot of wonderful sunlight. <laughs> you know, if, if you're not from a sunny place, go somewhere that's going to give you energy, that's going to just interrupt that pattern or that funk that you're in. Or it goes back to what we were just talking about with producers. If you're struggling, reach out for help. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a quick phone call to somebody that you know is going to pour energy into your day or reframe your situation, you know, and show you a more positive version of it. Uh, I, I think that's that's the key. I love it. Kimmy, thank you so much. This was a, it was a pleasure to have you on and we certainly appreciate you. Awesome. Thank you. All right.